most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement having. When I'm talking about this, they're expecting not to experience a hate crime, not only in their own biological family, but a hate crime in a community because people lied about their rights to speak on issues and matters that are not their business. You see, we have a society that has a major predilection to sex. The problem is that people want to sexualize, sexualize other people's business. It's not your right to insinuate, it's not your right to imply, it's not your right to even know who a person lays with, plays with, or stays with. That is actually factual, you know. Because in the Lord's house of God, intimacy is a privacy thing. And privacy should not be talked about in public policy. But we have an issue because American Christians consider that they are above God's house. American Christians think that they know what Jesus Christ makes and they spew blasphemy every day. It's one of the reasons that I will never ever in this lifetime complain or claim Christianity again. I am going to continue to be my priest self. I am going to continue to bash them for their lies. And what I mean by that is that I make videotapes and whoever listens to them, fine. But when someone plays in my technology, when someone steals my phone, when someone touches my computer when I am sleeping alone, they have violated federal law. And what that proves is if they'll do it to me, they'll do it to anybody. And they'll do it because their arrogance thinks I'm above God, I'm above him, I'm a master, he's a slave. But in truth, they've enslaved themselves to their plain, to their plain game, to their immature, childish, baby-ass game. The pranks they pull really are the things that are foolish today. The pranks they're pulling really look like they're 12 years old today. That's the shit that we did in junior high until we got in trouble for it. People learned how to code for the purpose of learning how to get a good job, not to learn how to screw somebody's life today. And openly what we have is a predilection of evil. We have a predilection of people wanting to be a part of Malfoy's house out of Harry Potter. And if your child likes that, you got a problem. Because it means they don't know what the rules are of God. They don't know what the rules are of America. They don't know how to work. And they don't know how to earn. I know how to earn, but someone's always trying to get involved in my life and burn what I'm working on. And I didn't give them one fucking right to get on my computer or on my phone or on anything that I own. And neither did you. So when you hear my rage, please find your own rage within you. That someone could do the same thing to you. Someone could commit identity theft on you and pretend they're you and walk in a place and say, I'm in charge of this man's finances and I'm going to pay this today. What a rudeness of an adult to do something like that to someone else who's in struggle, who's in peril, who's being abused. You see, abusers play that game. Abusers play the financial abuse game. I'm paying this. No, you're providing a check on behalf of someone that you're supposed to be managing their money. It's not your money, honey. And openly, it's not your right to advise someone who's made a promise what they can and can't pay for after they've given that verbal agreement. But let's not get into all the details, shall we? Let's just talk about you, not me. In your life, you have things that are important. What's important to you? It might be the same thing that are important to me. You see, in American society, we have things that are really important to us. Love, honor, and regard is usually important to most human beings. If you don't care what someone thinks of you, it may be one of two reasons. That you have nothing to do with their life at all, and therefore they can, you can say that in great ease. That those people have no rights and no access to your life because either they're not in your food demographic meaning they're not in your social economic class or education background, which would make the likelihood of an allegiance or an alliance somewhat odd. But at the same time, you might not have had really any interactions with them at all, besides maybe a stranger at the mall. And there's a few men in this community that I regard greatly because of their interactions and their honor towards me, and I'm happy to return that back to them. They acknowledge me, I acknowledge them, it's neighborly, we see each other almost every day. A quick nod, a hey, hello, and that's it, and off they go. They're not trying to solicit, solicit me for some fucking cigarette, they're not trying to ask me if I smoke, they're not trying to play with me as if it's a joke, they're acting like an adult, a mature one in society, who knows how to produce a loving, 
neighborhood community. The shitbags of a community will do other things. They'll walk in out of re retail stores. They'll piss all over people's rights. They'll walk in out. They'll steal. They'll, they'll steal. They'll thieve. And they do that and they blame other people as if they are entitled to that. A foolish child of any community will participate in an abuse of a human being. What it shows is that they don't have any concept of what it means to be an adult. Sadly, we've got a bunch of babies, and we know this, running around parenting children that they've done nothing to learn about. How stupid you look to society when you are barking orders at a child out of their notoriety. Children are beautiful creatures. And every single one of them deserves to find their soul, be loved for who they are, and grow up to be the best that they can be, even if it means they'll become a star. But for the time they're at home in your house, they should be a star in your house. Not overindulged, not spoiled rotten, but actually encouraged to learn the rules of the world, to be successful in the world. The other day I saw a marvelous father with his son, I wish I had had a camera that worked on my phone. I would have photographed them. They look so great. He was decked out in very classic player clothes with his britches up like a real man and his little munchkin of a son dressed just like him. And I love seeing that. He was basically saying, this is me and this is my son. He wasn't saying, this is me and this is my property. That black gentleman knew how to dress his son to look awesome. They could have been photographed, they could have been models, they could have been anything wonderful. They might have been going to meet his mother, who knows. But it was a pleasure to watch him care for themselves in honor and regard for their choice of fashion clothes. Now when I'm talking about hate crimes, we have to get to the nitty gritty. If you're peeing on someone in the night, you're producing a hate crime. An Indian boy on campus peed on me when I was asleep in the middle of the night behind a space where I could be safe from the predators of the life in that community. And he said, oh, sorry, as if he hadn't seen me, which was a lie he told himself. He should go back to his motherfucking native country if he wants to pull that 12-year-old shit. And he was lucky that I didn't get up faster to pound him into the ground. Because I know the laws of America. And I'm not sure a police officer would find that very amusing or bemusing if an old man pounded a student on campus for his peeing on him. You see, in the olden days, we had men's events that allowed us to take care of the shit like that. But there's always a pissant man who's not learned where his rights begin and end. And those pissant men will use their vehicles of their company to drive on top of someone and pressure them with that large thousand-ton vehicle. It's a violation, I'm pretty sure, of city ordinances. It's certainly a violation of U.S. DOT legalities of getting beneficial funding for that. I'm pretty sure that what that's what, what that means, or it means they got some certifications to have that. If you drive a truck, you better fucking know that you're responsible for it. But what I see a great deal of are all people of all walks of life, of all colors, of all races, driving down the street watching their cell phones in the middle of fashion malls where people and children are walking and running through all the time. How stupid of you. But a hate crime is when you pee on someone's clothes. So when they go to find their clothes, they can't put them on cleanly. A hate crime is when someone takes someone's clothes without their consent in the middle of the night and resizes them and then puts them back so that they fit so tightly they can't even wear them. A hate crime is when someone decides to change someone's clothes out without their consent. A foolish child's game literally takes things that a person has thrown away and tries to put them back on them and takes the things that they want. A hate crime allows some bastard child to think he's got the rights to put his hands in someone's pockets and take screws out of a knife that's in the pocket or steal matches or steal lighters or steal other things that don't belong to them. A hate crime is when someone decides to shave someone's beard without their consent or cut their beard in the night while they're in the middle of REM. And REM is our deepest, most important sleep during the night. It's when we recharge our batteries for the next day's fight. But the haters of the world are with us. The haters of the world are among us. The haters are often children who are bastardized in their nation. And then we allow them into our nation to study what? Something to allegedly take back to their nation. And yet they don't go. They come here. They stay here. They play here. And they find a way to be here. And it's usually based on a lie in their minds, in their souls, in their hearts that they're entitled 
to our life. It's a form of entitlement. Entitlement thinking is warping our society. Entitlement thinking says, I have the right to be entitled to take your mail, to ruin your life, to pay for things and not tell you, to not pay for things and not tell you, to destroy your bank records, to destroy your medical records, to enter your issues of your social workers or your social networks or your therapists that are dealing with you in your loss of your upcoming father's life. That entitlement thinking is an illness in a person. That entitlement thinking is a part of Satan. That entitlement thinking is, did that person ever fucking give you that contact information? The answer was no. But you stole yourself into someone's home. You stole their business cards illegally and immorally. And you participated in an illegal act of sabotage on someone's life. Now that's a hate crime. When a person is given a key to a house, it's usually for, in case of emergency, in case I die, in case they have a heart attack and you don't hear from me in a while, since my late father is gone, you're the person who's been chosen to do this because my late father entrusted you, but I don't trust you. And when personal intimate objects are removed from the home, when sexual toys are being abused, it's a hate crime. It's an inappropriate holy than thou satanic movement now i can talk about hate crimes in the ugliest of terms that we have bitches and bastards from christians communities that will commandeer a body through drugging it through a local restaurant and literally take it off and size it up evaluate it put records on file all with the help of local police and it's not their fucking right to do that but let me tell you we will have minutemen continuing to rise up to take care of our country, to take care of our lives, to take care of our homes, to take care of our wives without some satanic shitbag sheriff taking a hold of someone's precious photographs and carrying them like a trophy today. That's what we have. We have police officers and sheriff who steal people's property and carry them like a childish trophy of theft. It's an immoral act against God because God provides everything to everyone, even our friendships. And it's an immoral act to sabotage the loving relationships that God has placed in a person's life because you just don't like someone. Maybe that's your job, not at all. If you're not pursuing yourself as a spousal opportunity for someone, it's not your fucking right at all.